Hey folks, welcome to e-commerce 360. Today we have Laura Tashard, who is an e-commerce influencer who has had about 20 plus years of experience in driving sales through strategic marketing campaigns. Welcome, Flora. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So before we jump into the topic about uh, how D2C brands can compete with Amazon, tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, well, just as you said, I've been doing internet for the past 20 years. I started in 1999. Um, I had the chance to uh, be there right at the beginning. I was doing e-commerce already back then. It was very basic, mm-hmm. uh, basically only selling IT, uh, you know, computers and stuff like that. Now it's expanded to lots of, of products. Um, so great fun uh, seeing those 20 years of evolution. I'm French. Uh, I've been uh, spending 15 years of my professional years in France, and we've arrived with uh, my husband and our three girls in New York in uh, 2015. So it's been six years now. That's amazing. That's a great story. Uh, So um, if you don't mind, can we uh, get started on the topic, which is... uh, how D2C brands can compete with Amazon. Uh, so I was doing a bit of research on the topic and um, you know what came up was that about 147 million Americans have an Amazon Prime account, which means that any e-commerce brand who wants to you know, have a great kickoff, they, all they need to do is get on Amazon and access that customer base. So uh, why do you think uh, D2C brands are have to consider competing with Amazon or just not competing against Amazon, just, you know, have, uh, you know, their own sort of branding and online store and customer base. Because you mentioned it right now, the branding. Uh, I think that uh, the past years uh, that we've been through with the pandemic uh, has shown us that um, everything is very uncertain. And I mm-hmm. think brands have learned uh, the bad way uh, that being autonomous um, and that having uh, more control of, um, you know, your discounts or your stock level or the message that you want to address a customer is really the key. Um, Amazon is great. And as you said, I mean, it it gives small brands uh, the availability to target like, you know, thousand of uh, um, American and no worldwide, I mean, uh, customers, um, but this comes with a price uh, and, um, and this is identity. Uh, what I think, I mean, to, I, and I have that kind of account that you just mentioned. Um, and also it's not just retail. I have lots of friends who recently have launched their books, uh, for instance, on Amazon, because Amazon is also a publisher and, and many other things. Um, So what I think is doing both is great. And the more you grow, the more you can become autonomous because your strength is your brand, basically. And what I think is that on Amazon, um, except for maybe luxury brands who have, you know, specific entries, uh, if you sell more common products, then you will be uh, kind of blended, you know, amongst all your competitors. And it's going to be very tough to uh, show off amongst all those competitors, except for the price. Uh, If you want to lower your price and you agree to do that, then yes, you might make some sales on Amazon. But what I think is you have to stick to your price and being, you know, having your D2C uh, website allows you to speak about your brand, who you are, and also what makes you different compared to others. Where on Amazon, you would go for... I don't know, frame, mattress, or any you know, generic words, and then will show up. But customers will not really remember your brand. They will remember that you were the cheapest and that the comments uh, and the reviews were like average or good. Basically, that's it. And then if you ask someone, oh, so what brand did you buy for the frame or, you know, those common things or yeah. name or I don't know what, they will be like, eh, I don't know. Whereas mm-hmm. you, if you have your own website, then you're able to explain more deeply what your brand is about, why is it different, why the price is maybe higher, and this is one thing, but also you will be um, more autonomous regarding your sales period, the discount you want to apply, 
or the offers you want to make, uh, your database already of customers, uh, the way you want to address them, uh, the packaging, you know, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, and so to me, it's very important also to be, to exist. When I saw this ad that you were mentioning and those ads that I wrote about, mm -hmm. I was, you know, I was hit by this claim. I was like, why do those brands advertise that mm -hmm. they're not available on Amazon? What's what's the purpose of that? What does you know? Um, and then I thought to myself, and I was like, yeah, it actually it makes sense. Absolutely. So um, now that we have discussed the advantages of actually not being an Amazon, it provides you more authenticity, it gives them more identity, uh, it gives your uh, brand a strong presence uh, in, you know, which is like etched in a customer's mind. Uh, what do you think are some of the challenges that they might run into when they're not, you know, establishing themselves as not an Amazon brand? Um, well, the difficulty that we all have as brands uh, is to show on Google's results or any, anywhere else, basically. Uh, today, we're talking Instagram, we're talking Facebook, uh, well, social, social media in general, we're talking uh, Google, Bing, and all those, uh, you know, uh, platforms. So, yes, the difficulty if you're not on Amazon uh, when they do all that work for you because they advertise and they are yeah. everywhere. So if you go on Amazon, then you're, you're going to be found. Uh, yes, the difficulty will be to be found. Uh, but you wouldn't have to invest necessarily a lot. Uh, we've seen uh, there's been a crash on Instagram a few months ago and all those uh, brands were like, oh my gosh, uh, there's millions of investments in advertising. Uh, uh, so that was <laughs> no, like a catastrophic and um, so what I think also all this uh, taught us to uh, invest more on our contents. Uh, and I think that if you have really good quality uh, contents, um, then you will be able to entertain uh, and, and, and have a very good audience that would come and come again to see what, what are the news you're publishing. And, and you have to um, understand the specificity of every platform uh, content that you want to publish on Instagram will be different than the one you're going to publish on your website and show, uh, you know, uh, SEO results. Um, but I think the content is key, but this takes time. Uh, advertising is a quicker way, uh, you know, to, um, to show. Uh, and basically doing quality content takes more time, but I think is better on, on the long term. Absolutely. Um, so let's let's take a slight, you know, detour from Amazon brands versus, you know, non-Amazon brands and talk about uh, some of the metrics that uh, generally brands need to measure uh, while, um, you know, heading towards uh, a strong growth. So what kind of metrics in your opinion, because there are a lot of vanity metrics, like clicks, opens, or all those are... Uh, you know, may or may not have a direct impact on our on your ROI. So what are some of the metrics in your opinion that uh, brands uh, should measure to be on the path to success? Well, first and foremost, the sales. <laughs> so, sure. so that's the one uh, I'm looking at like every minute, uh, if not more. Uh, the sales is, is the first thing. Uh, second, um, I am really uh, looking deeply uh, onto my uh, customer database. Uh, mm -hmm. what I want to see uh, is new customers. So meaning that uh, the recruitment uh, that I've been doing is efficient. Uh, mm -hmm. And yes, I can target new customers and uh, that my, my message is right uh, because the you know, the way I speak to them, uh, talks to them actually, and they come and they buy. So this is, this is great. Uh, so having a view on your database of the new customers and also the returning customers. Mm -hmm. uh, what I can see is that, uh, for instance, globally, uh, the returning customers, they spend 10 times more than new customers. Uh, so that's, I mean, for, you know, um, the market uh, I, I am in. But this can be uh, two times, it's, it's whatever uh, market you're in, there's a chance that your returning customers are spending more and also are coming back more often. Uh, 
Um, mm -hmm. So really those two aspects of your database, meaning uh, checking that the customers that you, um, that you worked on and, and spent some time on recruiting, et cetera, because it's, 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 it's tough. Uh, it's, it's a long time job. So those customers that are new and, and, and that came in, make sure that they stay, that they come back, um, have dedicated communication towards them. Uh, and those new customers as well, so different message, address them differently, make them come. Uh, so yes, I would say this, uh, to me, those are the basic metrics, your sales and um, how your database, how healthy uh, your database would be, uh, I would say. Yes. And then you know, everything else, uh, you were talking about the opening rate, uh, click through, <laughs> conversion rate. All that is implied by the way your audience, your customers are responding to your products. And so this would translate into sales and customers coming back, basically. Uh, that's that's very, well, very good. Uh, so now that we've got metrics out of the way, uh, let's talk about some of the best practices uh, that you would recommend for uh, e-commerce brands to grow. Uh, should it be social media? Should it be own channels like email marketing? Or should it be influencer marketing? And if if it is all, then what should be the split? Um, so just yeah, let us know what your thoughts are. Well, basically owned and earned are, you have to find the right balance between the two. Uh, all meaning that the message, uh, your newsletter, uh, all the content that you would provide as, I mean, as being a brand, so your website is Taha, uh, and own being like, yes, uh, the advertising basically, uh, and the voice uh, of your brand, but on other others platforms. Uh, so I think having a balance between the two is essential. Uh, I try not to Invest too much. Uh, and as I said before, uh, really, really produce quality content. This, this is um, not always possible. Uh, video is something that I think uh, should really be considered uh, when possible. Uh, basically, I think that when you're e-commerce, uh, you have to stick to the basics of an e-commerce website. Don't try to reinvent the way it works. I mean, people have done, I've done that for the past 20 years. So Trust those people. Uh, what we come up with now and the standards are good. Um, the more payment options you offer, the less click uh, you know to uh, check out. Uh, the more infos on your products, the better. But those are the basics. Uh, and I'm, info, I'm talking like text and images. Um, so that that is the basic. Uh, so what I think is like to have a strong website with all those basics like checked, <laughs> green everywhere, uh, mobile, uh, obviously. And yes, talking about the ecosystem, I think it's really, uh, um, I, I don't remember who it was. It was a great, uh, huge brand. I think it was uh, Kodak or one of those great brands. And uh, the CEO was saying, uh, today's metric is um, the number of times per day a customer would think about your brand. Meaning you have to be, everywhere, anytime, any ways, uh, newsletters, uh, Instagram, Facebook, your website, blogs, uh, anything you can. Uh, I'm also a true believer of retail. I mean, the retail in-store, um, being complementary with the, re the retail online. Uh, so I think all this has to work together. Um, every touch point you can have with the customers uh, sometimes silly. I mean, it still works to, you know, give some, I don't know, papers in the street or, you know, whatever way you can talk about your brand, everything works. That's great. Uh, so basically, um, be out there, be everywhere where your customers are so that they keep you on top of their mind at all times. That's amazing. So this has been great, uh, Fleur, and thank you for coming on uh, our podcast. Uh, it was Pleasure. great to have you here, and we had discussed uh, some great points uh, about uh, how D2C brands can, if not compete, at least, you know, have create their own identity um, so that, uh, you know, customers can think of their brand more often. Uh, so this was great. Thank you so much. Thank you.